Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I will be talking about five photography tips that actually I have been using quite recently, and I found them very useful. And I wanted to share them with you because I think it will help you a lot. So without wasting any time, let's get started. The first tip is to use your other hand for balancing the lens to get better stabilization. Now, what do I mean by that? When you're using a smaller lens, it doesn't matter if you're holding the lens with the other hand or you're keeping your hand beneath the camera. It's fine because it's a smaller lens and you don't find issues while stabilizing. But the issue is when you're using longer lens. So right now I'm using a 200-500 mm and that longer focal lens at slower shutter speeds, if there is even slightest of shake, you will see that in your images. So the best way to hold the lens is use the other hand that is your left hand to hold the other end of the lens so that it helps in stabilizing. Make sure you don't touch the zoom or focus ring of the lens when you're holding the lens because it can totally mess with it. You focus on the subject but since your hand is on the focus ring, the focus might move a bit and you might get shots that are not in focus. Unless and until you actually start using this tip, you won't realize how useful this tip actually is. The second tip is to use your mobile phone before changing the lenses to get a better idea about composition. Now what do I mean by this? When you approach a scene, you think whether I should use a wide angle lens or a 35 or a 50 mm or something like a telephoto zoom, we don't get an idea just by looking at it. So to get a better idea, what you can do is use your mobile phone. Nowadays, mobile phones come with a wide angle, a standard and a telephoto lens as well. So whenever I approach any scene, I open my phone camera, then I toggle from the wide angle to the normal to the telephoto. I compare the three images and I check what composition is actually looking better. Then I decide what lens I have to use. The third tip is panning. Now you see this kind of shots, right? How are they captured? Basically panning is the combination of slower shutter speed and camera movement. What I have done in this particular shot is I've used a slower shutter speed of one tenth of a second and I've tracked the movement of the subject. So the parts of the image which were actually stable in real, you can see motion blur in those parts and the subject which was actually moving, you will see those subjects as sharp subjects. Now it's a very difficult technique. Frankly speaking, I haven't tried panning much and I'm not a pro at it. I have to try it a lot and it's a very difficult technique to master. But with practice, even I, even you will gradually learn it. One tip I would like to give you about panning is always use the center focus point and start tracking the subject with the focus point. It will help you in tracking and it will also make sure that the composition is intact. Also shoot in continuous mode because once you're shooting in continuous mode, if you have taken 10 shots, chances are three or four out of them might turn out to be good shots. It's a difficult technique, but as I said, with practice, you will get better at it. I would love to see what kind of photos would you get with this technique. So don't forget to use the hashtag shoot with Saurav on Instagram. Use that hashtag and I will see and I will comment on your photos. The fourth tip is to use your hand to see the direction of light. Now this particular tip I use always 9 out of 10 times mostly in portrait photography. When I want to place my model, what I do is I don't place my model, then I check the light, then I tell my model to move. Your model will get irritated actually. What I do is I use my other hand and then I move and then I check which light do I like. If the light is too harsh, I will slightly move and I will then check where the light is soft, right? Depending on the kind of light you want on the model, try to achieve the same light on your hand and then you can place the model there and then fine tune to get the best light possible. Now this tip, again, it seems very small, but it's a very useful tip. Not only it saves time, but it gives you the best light and the best images possible from that time and location. The fifth tip is to use auto ISO with manual mode. Now you can use aperture priority if you want a fixed aperture. You can use shutter priority if you want a fixed shutter speed. But what if you want a fixed aperture, a fixed shutter speed for a particular scenario, but you don't want to change the ISO continuously, right? 
it happens mostly when I'm shooting birds. The birds are moving continuously and the light changes. But I want my aperture and shutter speed fixed, but I don't want to waste time in changing the ISO. At that time, I use auto ISO and exposure compensation as well. Now why auto ISO? Because the camera does the job of changing the ISO. Then why exposure compensation? Now before you continue watching this video, if you don't know what exposure compensation is, watch my last video about exposure compensation to get a better idea. I use an exposure compensation of minus 1 or minus 2 depending on how complex the light is so that the highlights are not blown out. If the shadows are a bit dark, I can recover them in post-processing. But with the help of auto ISO and exposure compensation, it really makes my life a lot easier and I can click photos without worrying about changing the ISO. That's it from this video guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I have been using these tips recently and I found them very useful. I hope even you liked it and if you liked it, press the like button. If you're new to the channel, you want more such content, subscribe to the channel. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.